Perspective. I'm your host, Justin Mann, and today I'm honored to have Roxanne Swainhart with me. She is a channeler and a teacher, straight, I guess, a teacher student, as you would call yourself, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. I had you on my Philosophive podcast. Yeah. Now, a bit more specific channeling perspective, which I think uh, it's a bit of a more of a niche, but it's, you know, I feel like. I like it. I like the idea. I just watched your last episode uh, that you posted in uh, one of the groups on Facebook. Hmm. And uh, you watched uh, it all. what was her name? Lee? No. Uh, Jennifer. Jennifer, I know. Um, uh, she plays the flute. She was a Kashik reader and, hmm. uh, and uh, the uh, uh, soul linguist. Yeah. Coined the phrase. Yeah. Have you yeah, heard that, that phrase was... before? or Never. Wow, yeah. isn't that interesting? Yeah. How she, Up she until the now that I was listening to it when I saw it uh, posted. So I was like, oh, he's got it. Um, my pardons for not knowing, but do you have a YouTube connected to this or is this just a podcast that's, uh, man, at the moment, I have a, so I'm posting all the videos uh, from this podcast just right now on Facebook as videos. Yeah, it's the, it's the page. Yeah, because that's well, how I got informed. You know, it's, it's interesting because I, I saw, I noticed that Facebook is blocking YouTube a little bit more and I, it's like the distribution of any of my videos seems to just be over Facebook anyways. So mm. I might as well put my, what do you say? You say put all my chickens in the book. Sure. I don't know, sure. but I'll keep the philosophy vibe YouTube, maybe put the, the champ perspective videos on that platform. Uh, it's all on the, as you know, I don't know what the end picture is. I'm just following. A little yeah. Picture. Just let it unfold. It's already there. You're just playing it out in the journey. Yeah. It is. No, yeah. it is. It's yeah. uh, it's a humbling experience, and uh, but uh, b because yeah, the connections are so multidimensional, you know, and uh, there's so many. You know, it's not. We're not like as you probably saw with uh, Jennifer. It was not just about. It was overall about channeling, and but all yeah. the creative aspects of a channeling, which you would agree to 100%. That I mean. Oh yeah. You channel music as well, right? Oh yeah. Yes. I channel, channel my flute every day, right? It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I told her about that. I said that at our last uh, discussion or chat, um, you at the very end, you just like started playing. I was really impressed yeah. with that because yeah. Afterwards, uh, Jennifer and I, with somebody else, we had a little jam session uh, through Zoom. And, oh, awesome! And I was like, this, you know, this is obviously feels so familiar. And like, you know, around the campfires of the past or whatever, and people would just, I believe, communicate, talk, and then suddenly just start singing, you know? Yeah. Like, like it was in such a flow thing. And I was like, oh, it'd be so awesome. Magic. Yeah, it is. It yeah, is. it is. Sure, sure. No. But uh, yeah, so maybe, yeah. Um, now, the musical aspect, maybe we can talk a bit about that. So does, does that, um, is that an exploration that you've, you're going to more and more or what is? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I'm reminded what Jennifer says and what you had commented on about uh, not taking the path on how we're supposed to do it. Um, I, I picked up the flute uh, series. I have had the flute for two years, but I've been playing it a year now when it was time. So I always believe in natural timing. Uh, I reflect on Seth. Remember your Seth. Um, uh, natural timing as opposed to force timing. So the idea of force timing is doing it for a product, doing it for an outcome, doing it for an achievement. And my relationship with that becomes uh, extraordinarily strained through tension of intention to be gained in the idea of time. But of course, the presence of the self is creating the self in the now. So if I'm stressed and I'm looking at an idea of lack, to become something that my vibration is not putting out the frequency of absolute uh, bliss. So it's still the same action, but the relationship is different. So I followed it when it said, now it's time to play the flute. Therefore it became effortless. Now I practice every day, but I don't practice for purpose. I do it for passion because the relationship calls to me in the now to go ahead and do those things. And I do my scales. I learn music. I got some theory. Um, I play my own little ideas. I go out on my porch and start playing for the neighborhood every day um, and just and come up with stuff. So 
every world is a vibrational relationship of unexplored territory that is forever. Um, so you go into that and the tact is the direction I'm going in is music. So with that, I discover my relationship with music and I use the intuition part of me, the intelligent part of me, not the logical thing to make it. Because it's so funny is when I try to start doing something, I can feel the effort in it. Mm -hmm. And I don't like effort. I, I played an effort life all the way up until I met Roxanne and it's full bliss, right? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, that life was a very good life as far as the human life is. And it had all the value of the human, of uh, all the uh, hum, uh, human emotion relationships through every single dynamic aspect of pain, suffering, sorrow, glory, joy, success, failure, uh, you know, obligation, dedication, loyalty, trust, and all that stuff. Yay, human. And then you leave that world and then you discover this other world. So it's not necessarily passion about the object. It's the object that comes to you in the definition, of course, because we look at things and we understand them as flute, as uh, uh, brooms to clean the floor, uh, cooking, uh, the laundry. We look at things as defined, but if your relationship in that is forced timing, then in the, it becomes a struggle. So when I picked up the flute, I just started playing. And it came to me as I let go of the frustration accomplishing mind to get it right and allowed myself to take the journey, which I've been mastering. And it's still a continuation of allowance and surrender to take the beautiful uh, journey of uh, discovery, self-discovery, right? So uh, that was fantastic with the flute. And then... You know, I was like jazz, blues, and the calling is absolutely classical. I mean, I'm a oh. huge, huge classical, especially, uh, well, of course, I, I love uh, Mozart and uh, Beethoven for his thrusting, thrusting and bomb. You know, he was just extreme and he, fantastic anyways, you know, just the greats and Tchaikovsky and I play their songs, I play, uh, you know, uh, the, the different songs, the magic flute. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and I find that magic inside my relationship with the music to discover myself. So it, it's not about the thing I'm doing. It's about the interaction of the moment. Mm -hmm. And therefore passion remains, whether it's cleaning the house as a tornado to top to bottom, the time passes endlessly and seamlessly. And don't have a relationship of pain or chore in mind. There's no relationship of angst about getting it done. So the discovery of passion is the presence of the self. And no matter what you endeavor in, if it is the natural attraction to you, then the experience is going to be so enlightening and so intelligent that you cannot even fathom the accomplishment you could do with a, the exceeding mind of humanity to accomplish in time through a standard of someone else's belief systems on what should be the standard. Although I use things from the humans, of course, because there's a lot of guidance there, but I would never discipleship myself to the discipline of that. The discipleship is the church within, the kingdom of heaven within, whatever you want to call it, to discover yourself with the relationships of what's the current. And whenever it ends, it ends, and I move on to the next thing. But this, uh, you know, this, this current storm we're having with the pandemic and such has given me the allotted time to have an enormous amount of exploration time between uh, one of the things, you know, cooking was incredible for me because I was not a cook. Um, I was told I couldn't be a cook. I was criticized for my cooking and uh, blah, 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 belief systems, the human, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a blame game or anything as silly as that. It's just a realization. So when I started cooking, I just started out with what was intuition. And that was the idea of a slow cooker. And now it's turned into a vast array. I need a bigger kitchen. <laughs> nice. And I'm cooking twice a day. And of course, I have leftovers and, and warm them up. But I, I do a lot of stews. And I do a lot of different casseroles. I do uh, lots of vegetables, steamed vegetables, raw vegetables, rip my stomach up. And, but steamed vegetables do very well. So I explore that idea with this, uh, with the cooking world. And it's expanded to such an intuitive part. And it feels like you draw upon the, the elements of time. 
uh, the, 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 the selves that are explored as you in the evolution of the now of different perspectives. Some people call it past lives or future lives. Or that's really irrelevant but uh, to define it, but you can, of course, but it, it's still within you. And then you find yourself doing things. So like when I'm playing the flute and I find myself lost in my mind um, and, and, and it's the same as channeling. I'm just gone, but I'm present in the experience of it, but I have no no measure of force in, in that. So when I'm doing a recipe and uh, I feel the intuition and, you know, I'm doing the magic herb and doing the, uh, you know, the kitchen witchcrafting, yay, and just making it beautiful. So music and uh, intuition and musing and day-to-day -day, uh, conversations with people hone the craft of self-discovery. And it's okay. just, uh, it's immeasurable. It's, it's, it's priceless. That's, a, uh, uh, that's very well said. I mean, to the point, especially that whatever experience you're experiencing is actually feeding into the overall passion and every particular passion as well. Like the cooking is helping perhaps the, the music and the channeling as well. Like, uh, yes. It feels like, like it's all connecting the dots on building the same kind of relationship to reality. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's where I've, every time I'm, I'm wondering why am I now interested, for instance, for me was poker. Like it came out of nowhere several years ago. I didn't like poker. And then suddenly I was like, oh, I have the need to play poker. And I went to the casino, didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Just play, you know, play a friendly game. And, and then from there, learned a lot about myself and intuition of course because texas hold'em exactly you know seth yeah. seth talks about poker do you remember that quote? oh yeah it was a very yeah. moving one too it's like just play the best way to play is with your your cards revealed you know in a sense and i think a metaphoric sense you're with open mm -hmm. hands open cards which is the opposite of the mentality of the most people who play these games like, right right I've, I've seen that like holy shit the energy of that person is just you know un fearless and knowing and they even say, you know, you see, you see it often with a guy who really wants against me or whatever. He, I see he's so passionate. He's going to win no matter what. I don't really care. Right. And he just like, he says what's coming up next. It's the only card that would win it for him. And he just said it. And I it's like the chances of that, like 0.1%. Right. That like happens nothing. so often. Right. You're like, okay. I'm learning a little bit about like, this is where maybe it's interesting because like, I like to play poker. But I see where my passion, I don't burn, you know, like I, I get a lot of things out of it, but I'm not the guy who needs to win. And Right, because it's and, a journey. It's so a journey. relationship with it, right. right. And that's Seth, that Seth's philosophy about life is everything is relationship. So I, I took into account that relationship of, that's how I create my reality. I don't create with the tact or the force of, wanting something particular that's not in my now. I used to because I wanted to create ideologies of something that would achieve a certain state of awareness, of emotion, maybe happiness or safety or security. But I let go of those. So I created my reality through the interpretation of the reality in the present, the now. And then that's what Seth is so all about the relationship that I got was the most largest thing from him. So if I'm interpreting this reality, through an idea of the human perspective that lies in the memory and time, then I'm going to have that experience created through my emotional content of that because I'm an emotional being as a human perspective, yay. And then there's also the relationship of allowance that you can go beyond the reactionary emotion and look at it with a different set of eyes and those uh, will give you a new story about that. Just like, you know, you play poker, people do it one way, and then you can see it in the idea. So the relationship is the same. You're still playing poker, yes. but the relationship's different. The approach is different. And that, I think that's a, a phenomenal discovery uh, a, for, for creating. Absolutely. It's, I mean, it, it's, go, it's taking the perspective. I had an image once of like, so can you imagine playing a video game, okay, and you have, and I had also the image of like, you're playing actually multiple characters on different screens, right? And mm -hmm. then behind you is somebody playing you, playing these multiple playing characters. Playing you. <laughs> and, and it keeps going up and you're like, obviously the higher perspective is that seeing all this and enjoying the, the subtle observation, not needing things to be even different than they are just, and. and because why, why do we need to make them different? 
yeah, the, the human perspective is uh, right. I mean, the human sort of, wants to <laughs> give right. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> the human lives in, in polarization, sure. But that's yeah. I think that's the gift of the game is to see yourself as a uh, as that being that uh, lives the lives the uh, the life of separation in its fullness. I mean, if we were connected, we would not be separated, and therefore the quality of the human experience would be the quality of a different, of a connected being, whether mm -hmm. it would be Andromedan or, or uh, Arcturian or Pleiadian, the relevance is the connectivity and the remembering as a creator. But mm -hmm. this one was so unique, we have no idea. So therefore we get the full thrust, the magnitude of panic attacks, the absolute tear jerkers of a baby being born, Right, mm -hmm. and the absolute atrocities to see humanity kill each other just because of a political point of view or something like that, right? Yeah. And it's 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 a manifesting an unconditional world that is undiscovered, and the masters that are present are discovering it through their own ideology, and it's 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 priceless. It is. It's it's what's we, it's the hero's journey. You know, it's it's definitely yeah. We, we love it for the draw. Oh, I like that the hero's journey. Exactly, <laughs> we're all on that hero heroine. Uh, it's it's uh, it is that. You know, I talked to Ryok when I had Tyler on the show. I don't know if you've seen that episode, but uh, I had, when he was channeling Ryok, I asked Ryok about his civilization. If like, did that- Where's uh, Ryok from? Esasani. So same as- Okay. Him. And so it was basically- Esasani? Esasani. Yeah. And so from a society or that doesn't have the contrast we do. So he was saying they see the choice or, you know, uh -huh. but they just don't, they just go naturally to where they prefer. And I was asking, of course, where did the, where does the desire come from though? Like the contrast seems also to be part of that propulsion. Um, what's your, what's your point on that? Is it, is it maybe something we have and obviously in our experiential way that maybe these other civilizations can't viscerate? I think we know? create desire on that because we have lack. Right. That, you know, why would we need to have preference for one thing over another through a desirous outcome? Well, A, you need time to have a desirous outcome. So there must mm -hmm. be a time present because the now present doesn't value the future because it doesn't see the future, nor has a concern of future, nor is it creating a memory to see the future through the memory because the memory is what creates the future, the past, because you can have no conception of the unknowable. So you create the potential out of the now, the past, future, right? So in, in the ideology of that, in my take, when you're connected for in eons and eons and eons and billions and billions of forevers, you're that singularity. And that singularity takes a portion of itself and then pushes itself in a very compressed and very hostile world that has no memory of itself. So it's a very scary place, A, and then when you get here, you have no idea that you are connected so that what you covet to return to that connectivity is the idea of the desirous. And we use the outside external definitions, achievements, if you will, uh, to fulfill ourselves. And that's why I think we're uh, lacking in our pursuit of life because we keep pursuing happiness. How can happiness sit outside of us when we are the happiness yes. in and of itself as existence? But again, that's the game and I love it. Mm. And then to realize, so, so if I, you know, uh, talk to, well, you know, I, I didn't talk to the Esasani, I've channeled the Esasani many times, but I didn't ask him that particular idea. So I was looking at the idea of uh, Osiphius when we were talking about it mm. and Sly was uh, chimed in on as well. What is naturally attracted to you? This is not a gravitational idea that you are gravitating towards something. You are attracting your now, right. and that now is a match of evolution, not a match of person of of, of, of perseverance to accomplish uh, or reflect on yourself in judgment. It's an evolution of the self to realize the next self to be chosen so you can find yourself beyond yourself because why do you want to keep being the same person? Well, we're told that. We were taught safety, security, identity, um, all these things, and you hold on to them. And you know it as soon as you change and someone is expecting you to be the same person and you're not the same person, then they have an upsetting in their abruptness. And they're like, wait a minute, Justin, you're not the same person. I don't like the new you. I want you to go back to the new you or the old you so I don't have to be uncomfortable. So, so people rely on those dependencies of externalized uh, definitions, which gives us the passion of the game itself. And I think desire to do that lies in time to become something. So Osiphius was saying, if you are enough now, you attract that of change automatically. There's no effort in reality. So I started taking the effortless route and my life has changed beyond the idea of a mind, little puny freaking mind. <laughs> 
of 53 years of, of, of memory that can ever fathom creating an idea to get that's beyond the prices I found in the journey of the now. Yep. So mm. if they have desire, well, cool, let them have it. I'm mm. not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of tension, intention. Mm. Uh, to me, it causes tension. Um, it's a relationship in the now. Mm. Um, have, but, have, we're, but we're taught productivity. We're taught are. productivity. Mm. So anyways, go ahead. I, this brings up another conversation I saw you have with uh, Gary Temple Bodley on his uh, round table yeah. discussion. And there was uh, one point. Joshua teachings, right? Yeah, exactly. There's, I mean, it's, it's nice to see when she has a little bit variations in the, their interpretation of the material they're getting. And there was a point about intention. So his, he, he, he channels information that says, of course, we have pre, pre-birth intentions. And you were getting a bit, this idea of a intention, obviously, in the, in the now moment is we have, we're like, we're free agents. So, but obviously, we, we, we must have propelled ourselves with a certain energy to that make things very obvious in our taste, for example, like, why am I interested in, as a kid? In well, how about and, this? Uh, see, and see, again, I don't propel. I attract. The right. law is attraction. Mm. That's what it is. Whatever is in my now is my truth to transcend. If it's not in my now, either it's the unknown coming or it's what I've already coalesced. It's like a self that you've been and you have it in your memory. You would never act a particular way. You can never do that again because you know that vibration. So therefore, it's learned and it's part of your social memory complex. And there's no reason to keep reiterating. Mm. But we reiterate out of habit and stuff like that. But that, but again, it's choice. I don't think we come here with predestination of ideas mm. because if if I come here, I'm giving myself, oh, there's an incarnation. Here's all the probabilities. Okay, let's see what happens. Mm. I can't be forced because I am. And I am must be chosen by each individual singularity because no one has the thrust upon another because each singularity is their own singular truth. That allows us to take um, to be unconditional mm -hmm. because if there were two that were the same or one was over another, then that would be the limitation and the, the, the failure of creation as unconditional mm -hmm. because one would have a condition over another. That's why, that's why there's no one in charge. There's nobody in charge. It can't be. Because if there was someone in charge, we would find the end of that charge. We would find the box and we could not go beyond ourselves because that person cannot expand with the beauty of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So diversity lies in the eye of the beholder. The unity is to unify the self and that diversity allows us to continue to expand. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, everyone that's offering is not the scripture, nor is it the standard. Mm -hmm. It's evolution. Yes. Well, that's but, what it is. And I love it. I love it too. I mean, but obviously there's, there are stages of evolution. So of course, I, uh, but I, I, I've obviously from the state of amoeba or whatever, moving up, I mean, there is some sort of intention to learn, uh, to experience enfoldment of consciousness in certain unique ways. So obviously the ape started with tools, but going to human is a, a use of consciousness. That's a bit more intricate sentient. Sure. Sentient, exactly. Maybe. And in on the evolutionary scale of humanness, the building a, how do you say, certain, and we've done a lot of things, the suffering and war-based stuff, and those experiences. Yeah, we're real good at that. We're right now at, we're ending it. We're, we're ending it, but, uh, but I guess the yeah. intent, you could say there was intention in the seed to go through a certain direction. I don't direction. think so, but you can, you can have that. I think yeah. it's all choice in the now of attraction. Uh, you're because, because, true, because, yeah. because we've got to remember one thing. And if you are a believer in Bashar, and I don't know if you are armed, but there's billions of earths created by each singularity and the co-created in the now. Yes. So the only thing you have is your house. Mm. There's no Germany until you go outside. Yes. There's no France. There's no sky. Yeah. There's no nothing. Yes. So I look at that as the uniqueness of the billions of earths, that psyche, the creator, co-created earth. And I think that earth manifests on the mass idea of the vibrational attraction. So eventually we're going to attract a world of separation between the 3D earth and 4D earth and involve the species. Mm -hmm. But if it's done through intention, great. But I don't see that because the now mm -hmm. can't be intensified. It I has agree. to be what it is, except yeah. you, as mm -hmm. the truth of you, mm -hmm. gets to put intention on because it's not wrong. It's not, and it's not it wrong. sure as hell ain't everyone's right. No. That's the beauty of unconditional, mm -hmm. God. I agree oh, completely. I finally just, see that. Uh, no, it's, it's but to For get me. to a point where you, a complete free agent is. Oh is, yeah. Is, that, that's because we're not at the stage where we can really just walk out and I'm in 
where you are in Texas when I got the door. Okay. That is conceivable from our vibrational reality, obviously for other beings and non-physical. Yes, whatever, but, yes. But to change space-time location, yeah. Exactly. Like like that. That. And, but it's be, because I, I, of the journey, but I guess to fill that out a little bit, I have my journey, like a lot of people, I came here to experience, I guess, a perfection of a child being, the feeling of being totally- And that's loved. occurred. Yeah, as a baby, yeah, as a yeah. completely worthy, and then to learn I'm not worthy. <laughs> yeah, I'm worth right. This. Worthy, not worthy to worthy, right? And now going back to worthy, not probably to where I felt like worthy as a baby, because I mean the baby I think was actually literally they think something like an apple and they kind of get it. You know what I mean? Like there's right. They, they don't have the world is serving them so obviously, but they're because they're cute and uh, and stinks. You know, it's it's there's something else going on there too, and uh, and that's that's not. Uh, intention obviously um but we're doing it now i guess as we get older we can mix in that fun game of intention of course that, you that can we're here for have yeah. all the fun you want with intention yeah. it's a tool the one thing i know if it's on the existence side of thing that's why you can use it that's why i know there's nothing wrong with people that drink smoke take drugs kill or love or are good samaritans i know there's nothing wrong with slaughtering animals and i know there's nothing wrong with not eating animals I know that. This is what we are. We are unconditional choice of self-discovery. That's yep. because all of consciousness you get to use because it's here. So it must be true to use. It's not a false. False for me exists in non-existence. I remember my Bashar. Yep. Bashar said all of existence is true. All of non-existence is not true. And all of existence is full of truth. All of non-existence is full of not true. So if it's here, it's yours to use because that's the attraction for the experience of the self. Mm. I get it. Okay. I love it. Uh, with Bashar, the consuming of um, animal meat, obviously he says uh, we are being consumed in a certain way as well. I mean, by other beings and our higher of course. self. I mean, it's a, the idea of consummation, but energy doesn't disappear. It's obviously a form is transfiguration. Form is yeah. Transfiguration. And the animals, yeah. they seem to know this and they don't, I don't think they mind. They're not touched. Well, they're evil. experiencing a life. They never yeah. die. When, they're, yeah. when, when you see them as dead, they're, they're alive experiencing a death. And how they experience is uniquely there. We can never know their, them. We can never know. If, if I see an animal being slaughtered and uh, uh, being abused, like a dog being kicked or something that would spark my emotion, that's my that's emotion. Mm. The dog is unique and still itself. Mm. They are experiencing their life. Mm -hmm. Innocent, whatever, however you want to label it. See, that's your journey. That's your experience. That's your interpretation. That's your human. That's your mm. humanity. That's the beauty. That's the master class. No, it is. Oh. It is. It's acceptance, oh. absolute, absolute acceptance. And uh, mm. it's obviously we, yeah. did, we did come here on another side for the idea of attachment. You know, obviously we're going to have certain bonds to people that are for us. We form them, yeah. And, and, and as long as we accept that idea and, and try to, it's always the balancing of when am I being not genuine when am I trying to please somebody else or when am I? Well, that's know, just, you know. that's just realization and choice in the moment. Mm. You know, I don't need to balance that because I can't be out of balance because balance lies in the idea of time. Mm. What, what am I supposed to be doing? What I should be doing? How about what I am doing is enough. And then Absolutely. the next now I have another choice, but that's, that's the evolution of each individual. Mm. I use a lot of terms to get to my here, but when those terms no longer serve me, you keep climbing the ladder and let go of an old rung. <laughs> that was written about 35 years ago by Bashar. I remember that one. That just popped wow. in. Wow. Yeah, that like 35 years ago, he wrote his, that down. Is that his blueprint? His blueprint uh, paper? Or? I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know. It's like that one and the other one that I remember is you literally do not need to think on this planet. Yes. And that, yeah. that has resonated me. It's like, I don't need to think about that. Because right now, what, what am I missing if I'm mm. alive? If my existence is known as enough, mm -hmm. if I am life in and of itself forever, then what in my reality is lackful? Save what I say is lackful through the defining a, a structure of humanity. And then if I realize that, then I can accept that my lack in the moment as the beauty of my own creation, because I created lack because I came here as, a, as an unknown creator. It doesn't mean I'm still not creating. I, I didn't lose my godship. I don't have to earn my way back to my I am, I am, I am, right? Mm. So, so I get the thrust of realizing my own fear 
being taught by another, being offered it, then being coveted because I knew no other reality. So I coveted these belief systems and then I experienced them. But when I see them, I have the humility and surrender, as Jane said, to accept that as my truth. Mm. Then I accept that idea as my belief and that's what transfigures it. Because my approach to it is not the definition of it in identity. My approach to it is the relationship of realization that I have a choice about this interaction of this belief system that I've created. So I don't need to look over here and look over here, which one's the best. I already know when one's the best. Do I have the courage to choose it though? Yes. So, and the answer is yeah. in the now you'll know. Mm. But the one thing about the now is that you have an infinite number of nows. So take your time and don't worry about mistakes. You're not losing out on anything. You're just going now. It's like an infinite number of do-overs. Just keep doing over. You're still now. Everything is fine. Yeah, I, I, can see the, I know a wonderful movie that came about the do-overs was that um, Edge of Tomorrow with- uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Netflix. What a great movie. And, M -M Emily Blunt. Wow. Oh, great actor. Tom, Tom, you know, Tom Cruise, he's, uh, he's that tough Tom guy. Tom nailed it. That, you know, he, he always does that action hero stuff. Great science fiction. I must say, I, I yeah. actually read the screenplay, funny enough. Really? Uh, before it became a movie. It, it was a very different version, like many years before that. And I think what it was, was a guy was like in a, a video game, but he was literally being, going onto a planet, another planet, and evolving each time he was killed on the planet, and cut, like do-overs in a game. Like, yep. And they changed yep. that into the, you know, the planet Earth. And, right, right, right. And him learning through this uh, cycle. Yeah connection and and that's what we're here kind of doing too where we're like we can take a step and then we get killed uh you know in our, in our in our carcinations i'm sure like like the first the first maybe you come out as a baby and you're like i'm not staying here and you, you and know, you like, go <laughs> you know, like screw this and, and then we think that's such a tragedy of course and then from one perspective it is uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's perfectly human, valid it is, sure but from the spirit perspective we have to acknowledge that spirit has a loves everything to a degree that we will never understand or comprehend why you know as the human yeah why does it love hitler why was hitler equal to jesus for spirit you know why, why you know these kind of things are like for us not but there's a reason and there's a balance of a bet not balance i guess you would say you can this, say what you want darling like, no, i just know that i know creation is unconditional why not yeah. Yeah. yeah that that's what allows us to keep going forever mm. Yeah. For so me. What, what, what it, now, for your lifestyle, is living in the now as much as possible. Okay, the Always idea of, now. I what, don't have time for anything. But do you, <laughs> but do you start your day with uh, uh, like uh, in, uh, intentions, uh, gratitude oh, no. things? Oh, God, no. no. Oh, wow, no. okay. No. Yes. I get up, I make my coffee, I pop on the morning podcast, whatever I'm feeling. Mm. But right now, I'm listening to Spanish. Because, man, I was like up at five today. Mm. So I turned on Xbox and played fallout 4 while i'm listening to uh, my spanish and uh, i had like my coffee this is an interesting thing like for for me too like with the little yeah. bit of add where, I, always... I, where I'm, I'm, I, I need sometimes i do need like uh, some several things going on at the same time to keep i me think so yeah that feels good yeah mm. yeah and I, I like that and then you know then i have you today and then uh, you know it's like I started at five and the next thing I know it's seven. So I got up and mm -hmm. start doing the next things, so, you know, change my clothes. I did a little bit of makeup, went over, made some tea and then came here and sat with you. But the day just flows. I don't have to make it. It's, it's always discovered. I do have, however, feelings about a now, but the now expands in time. So let's say the now is this entire day. So I have an, a very good inkling that I'm going to do a load of laundry today because I can feel it. Remember when um, mm -hmm. Jane was talking about Seth? I can feel Seth around, you know? Yes. I can yeah. feel him around. So it's like I can feel Osiphius. I can feel Sly. I can feel laundry. I'm mm -hmm. going to do a load of laundry today. But if I would have asked me that yesterday, there was no feeling about that. 
because it wasn't on my attraction radar. So when the laundry, me and me, I get up and start to choose to do laundry, it'll be such a natural timing. It'll be the same thing as drinking my tea. It'll be the same thing as playing my flute. The unique motion and interaction, of course, is different, but it's not effort. It's not lying within the scope of polarity mm -hmm. as in a chore or a pain in the ass or an escape or a good time because the human aspect doesn't live in the now, it lives in time. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in the now and I'm in that motion of life, then life is endless and seamless and of course forever now. And the day goes by, it's, it's, it's so amazing. I get up at five and the next thing I know, I'm sitting in bed at 11, 30, 12 o'clock reading a book. and it's like, I don't know everything I did in the dirt day, but the one thing I've discovered, I don't need to know what I've done because I don't need accomplishment because the now is accomplishing. It's mm -hmm. always fulfilling. It's always beyond the measure of an achievement that lies in time that fulfills you with emotion and immediately gone. And then you have to go and pursue the next thing. Mm -hmm chasing to have a good time. I, I remember mothers trying to make their children follow a schedule of how to play. <laughs> you know, right, yeah. here's how we're going to have a good time at Disney, kids. We're going to do all this. It's like, why can't we just go? Just go. And, and, and so that, that reality took hold of me. So when I'm in the now, my days are endless. I just, I, I can't tell you what I do. I just do. And it's never measured because I don't have a relationship of defined accomplishment through action that my ego approves us as a success or a failure day. Mm. I did, but mm. that was the human. So I went beyond the human and now in, there's no emotion relative to the action of time, but there is only motion. Mm. And motion is seamless, just like this conversation. I don't know where the hell it's going. No, I don't care where it's going. Right. Sure. Because it is the journey between mm. me and you to discover ourselves. And what's more priceless than that? Nothing. This is absolute exquisite now. Mm. Absolutely. I, I think yeah. that you're, you know, I, I'm on board with, obviously, with what you're saying. There's, there's an aspect that's, that comes up, which people term it different things. They can call uh -huh. it soul, soul work of focusing a little bit on limiting beliefs to that the expansion that we have or to more passion, to more of who we are does as natural, sure. The natural, natural, but there's also some sort of quote unquote work by looking at where our, our shadow work or looking at our limiting beliefs. Is that, can that be like naturally part of the flow or that's the attraction? That, absolutely. Mm. You are always, look, if you're a vibration, okay, let's, let's take this. Here you are as a human swimming along with your human self. This is the ego and you are the creator of the ego and you only know the perspective of the ego. Seth called it infatuation. You're infatuated with the point of view. The day walkers that came down, walked upon the earth, got so fascinated with the idea of the perspective of this human incarnation that they forgot their endings or their beginnings of themselves and they were now the end of that self as the incarnation and worked in the idea of separation but that's one that's one uh point of view right so in that idea you're swimming along and you change your vibration by choosing something that's not the norm not what you set in time as the way you're supposed to behave mm -hmm. i bit my tongue because i didn't want to get in trouble if i do that there might be a consequence yeah but if i do this and that might happen and that but if i don't do that then they're not going to like me so you make the idea to keep yourself the same frequency which is not right or wrong it's choice but when you wake up to yourself and realize oh wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute today today i'm going to choose me Oh, that's selfish. Oh, you can't do that. You're supposed to be in service to others. Okay. Osiphius, and I bought it. I bought a hook, line, and sinker, and I, now I know it. The highest act of love is to love yourself. Because if you're a half-ass lover, then you're going to get half-ass creations because it's an attraction deal, right? So, yeah. so, so I started understanding that, that, that relationship with that vibration. If I'm choosing joy, I'm going to find through natural attraction, the attraction of change that will expose me to my own ideas of my emotional value belief systems. Mm -hmm. So I'm going like this and then I change frequency. My belief systems are banging against me. Right. So now I'm upset because I was set. So now I'm upset about things and I was like, holy cow, I'm mad at you. I am blaming you. You did this to me. 
it's your fault. And I was like, holy cow, it's not your fault. It's my belief system. God, this sucks. This hurts. It's not them. Oh, my God. They're just unconditional people that forgot like me just acting in their own idea and journey. It's me. So you start seeing that the belief system, the fear is not with snakes. The fear is not with heights. The fear is fear that you mm. own because we yes. created that because we were born into a world of separation where you can walk in and you're dead, <laughs> you know? So it's yeah. a very hostile idea. And we have that mastery, that absolute bliss of being separated and then journeying with only the tools that were coveted by our society. And you can see the division. The Christians are right. The Muslims are right. The pagans are right. Everyone's right and everyone's wrong because we're divided because we don't know the beauty of ourselves. We contain ourselves within the identity of the covets that we harbor as identified. And if we lose those, we feel empty and we're afraid. But when you choose the beauty of yourself of change in the moment, the comfort that's built into the isness supersedes all the security and safety of the image because the image starts to deplete and become shallow of yourself. It's a reflection of you. Mm -hmm. And then you realize this approach. So, so I know from me, my journey, and I'm not special. I'm another the run of the mill God, right? In my journey, my actions in the now have shown me every ounce of my belief system mm -hmm. up until the now. Do I have more? I don't know, nor do I care. Mm -hmm. Because if I keep acting on my joy, mm -hmm. I will find every ounce because I'm an enlightener. And if I'm acting my vibration of worthiness, I'm growing lighter. So I'm going to find in my kingdom that belief systems which harbors a certain frequency of attraction that no longer serves me. Mm. So I go ahead and accept it with its full bliss, surrender to it, let it pass through me, experience the emotion of it, whatever is the emotion is hopeful, whether if it's gratitude, whether if it's obligation or respect, or whether if it's atrocious or suffering or rage, whether it is the idea of victimization, it does not matter because it is mine and then i bring it in and i become it and then i transfigure it and then oh the release it's like it's like this it's like god god boom and you're like oh ah oh, shedding of a skin too oh, just yeah. and then you realize the next you the next self the probable self of expansion because you realize the full thrust of your own created self mm. in its dignity and its beauty that it is and you open yourself up to it and, and became it and transfigured it. And now you realize your own evolution. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, yeah, I think it all comes. I haven't lifted a finger. I've never pursued. I am attraction. No, oh, that's a beautiful Works way for of me. putting it together. I mean, it's definitely also the release and the, that feeling of expansion. Mm -hmm. Like if you were just mm -hmm. obviously finished creation complete you know you don't have the actual creation expansion and feel you know it's always we uh, you can't it's interesting yeah because you can't experience what it feels like to be light if you don't you have, have to that discover dark. it yeah you have to come out from the dark and say see the yeah. contrast and like oh so that's i feel yeah. the dark that was not so much fun but now i can really express <laughs> my you know in the light a lot more uh how do you how would you say it a, a more a really appreciation of something that's already natural appreciation it's kind of right it's natural of yourself your own natural. state of being and that's, mm -hmm. that's so bizarre to something that, is. We, that we already naturally are complete appreciation and acceptance is our natural and realize state. that you are that state of being yeah yeah. You're not, a, you know, when, when when creation, like Bashard said, when creation shows you to exist, that's it. You are, I am. There's there's nothing else you need to know except the beauty of that presence of you that is life everlasting and a, a state of being that is beyond any conditions that we can imagine. Mm -hmm. So your highest version of joy is a very, very conditioned reality of the natural state that you are. When you start to grow into your beauty, it's that you're almost embarrassed of it because you're so awesome. You can't accept your awesomeness because you don't feel like you deserved it. Yeah. But if you accept that awesomeness, then you grow into your isness and then realize the beauty of your own pain in the past mm. was the evolution of yourself realized. Mm. And that's that that can't be gotten anywhere else. That's, that's why I well call said. it the master class. You that's know? very well said. I mean, very poetic. I think that uh, and probably a good place maybe to um, end the podcast because... Uh, well, you know, there are rules of time. 
I don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, I can go. I want to, but I want to save something, of course, for the next. Sure, sure, go ahead. Do. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I will, I'm once again very appreciative and happy that you were able to make time. Um, <laughs> And, uh, just in the now, baby. Just in the just now. now. I, and uh, I'd have to re rewatch everything to see what came up because obviously it, it, it was action packed. And uh, I think there's a lot of, um, for, I hope for people, something in there for hopefully everybody. Well, there, there, there is. And, the, and yeah. the beauty of it is that if whether they see it or not within themselves is not our job. No. And lighteners, light bearers offer light. Those who choose the light within themselves that is reflected within themselves, because I'm not outside of you, I'm inside of you. Yes, that's true. You're not outside of me, you're inside of me. Yep. So your light shows me something about myself. Whether I choose it or not, it's not up to you. No, 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 I, I, and I, you're yeah. somebody I can see who appreciates that. And that's, uh, you know, we're, I, we don't take anything for granted. And that's very interesting state of being, because it's like, even watching like Mickey Mouse cartoons, can be like a Beautiful. message from 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 God. You know, it's like it's so obvious that you're like, okay, yeah. it can come in any freaking form. Thank you. In any and, now. Any now. All right, Roxanne. Yeah. Keep, so I, I wish you a, a wonderful day. And uh, yeah, well, I appreciate time. so much uh, this offering that we got to do this. So we'll do it again whenever you're ready. Awesome. All right. Bye. All right. Take care, darling. Yeah. Bye.